Welcome along to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our yes, monthly welcome. chats, which is probably more three monthly. Yeah. <laughs> we've got Gregorio, of course we've got hello, Gregorio. Hello. And in this video, first of all, we're going to be announcing who is the winner of our ultimate add-ons giveaway. Now, if you cast your minds back, we did the best bikes of 2024 and yeah. uh, people had to comment to say why they deserve these. So we will be letting know who the winner is of what these prizes. products. It's amazing. it's amazing. It's incredible. There's yeah. at least, is, is at least, 150 quid's worth of exactly. kit there. Exactly, entertainment you, for the masses and free gifts. And for, you, what more do people want? Exactly. What more do people want? <laughs> We've also got some Q&As from Instagram and Facebook. Yep. So questions you've asked us, which we will go through. Fantastic. And we're going to talk about what other new bikes are coming out yeah. this year that we some, missed in our Some we chat. forgot. Some we forgot. Which was some totally ridiculous, but we did. We, we, we'll come on to it. We'll come on to it. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cuppa. I've got a dry glass already. I'm not sh quite sure what's going on there. And uh, sit back, relax, and chop see. Roll the intro. So when we did the last video, we did the best bikes we're looking forward to in 2024. There was one bike that we're really <laughs> looking forward to, but we completely forgot about it. And everyone said, Chopsy, where's what the Hyper about? Motard? And it's yeah. like, oh, of course, the Hyper Motard. That was ridiculous. The Mono Hyper Motard. So I think the launch has actually just literally happened as we're recording this. But I've had no feedback from anyone who's been on it as to right. how good it was. I think it's a bit wet. I think it's a bit, a bit, a bit damp. Italy. Yeah. Right. So it's a bit of, I think it was Spain. It was it's in Jerez, yeah. Oh, right, okay. So it's a little bit of a shame it's a bit wet, but no yeah. feedback. But that's a bike, I think. Obviously, we're both big Supermoto Super Moto fans. fans yeah. so, you know, and, and the question I've got is, are they, are they stopping the twin then? That's does a really good question. Does it replace I, it? We don't know. I don't think it's replacing. I no. think so it's, it's as well addition, as. So they've yeah, gone for a bit addition. more of a real yeah, Supermoto yeah, type yeah, vibe exactly, with a single. Yeah. The, right. the rumour I've heard, because I was tapping people up while, <laughs> while yeah. I was in Spain on the Super Duke launch, is it's very peaky though. Right. And maybe not very grunty. Which is not what you want. Not really what you want for Supermoto. So... But you this know, is from people that haven't ridden it. Well, this is people who... This is from Chris Northover, who knows people who have ridden it. Right. Apparently, it's quite a bit more peak. But yeah, we'll find out very soon, because yeah. I think the videos will start hitting next week on, from the reviews. But um, yeah. yeah, it's a bike I'm excited about. Wow. You know, it looks... It looks really yeah. good, doesn't it? You know, and the and RV Yeah, I think it well. does look really good. And I think probably there won't be that many of them around no. because it's quite niche, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, you know... I'm quite surprised because everyone seems really excited about it. It got like the best looking true. bike at the land. I know, that's, that's the point though, because that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's what I said as well. Yeah. So everyone's, it's quite a buzz about it. Yeah. But how many are they going to sell? You know, unless people think it's a cheap way into a cool looking Ducati, I'm going to get one. Yeah. But that, Which you know, is. but if, I don't know, they don't sell many no. SMCRs, do they? You know, no, so it's, exactly. it's a, quite a niche bike, but there seems yeah. to be a lot of buzz, a lot of excitement about it. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Time will tell, I suppose, yeah. how many actually sell. But I will be riding one hopefully soon. There's also a Ducati Media Day. I think that's in May. Right. So I've asked if we can have two spots <gasps> on that meet. It's, so we can both go up and maybe do some comparisons between right. the... So anyway, and they will have the. the they will definitely have the, the mono yeah. there as well, as well as all the other very range nice. there. Yeah, so, so nice. we're trying to blag, trying to blag two spots, yeah. but we'll see. Well, I'm very interested in it because obviously my 690 SMCR is poorly. Poorly, it's not very well. No, and it's sort of putting me off a little bit because even if I fix it, you just think, oh, is it a bit of a Friday afternoon bike, and will it last? You know, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's fine, yeah. and it might be something. Well, we don't, we don't actually we don't, know, we don't what's know what's wrong, wrong with it. We, we, we haven't stripped it. We don't know it. what's wrong, exactly. Yeah. So it, we, just, we, it just doesn't sound too healthy, but there's no reason for it to be catastrophically bad. It's been certainly done 2,300 miles. Yeah. It's meticulously maintained. I mean, meticulous because I'm, I'm ridiculous. You're, you're, I'm too anal. I've, ne really. I've never known anyone. No, I'm too anal. So, so I'm hoping it's nothing too serious, yeah. but I, it just sort of bothers me a little yeah, bit that I've had does, an issue. Yeah. So the, the hypermotor, the new mono, could be of interest. Although, if it is very revvy, that would be yeah, I know. Not we'll have to try because, it because we? when you're riding on small lanes, and you know you, you're not really going over about 60, no. 70 tops, yeah. and you want it really instantly grunty. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to be thrashing no. it. It's not a road. It's not a road bike no. in that sense, is no. it? So I can't wait to ride it. Yeah. And maybe you can retune it and map it. And, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll be brilliant. I'm but sure it'll be. Good. Yeah, we, we'll see. We, we should yeah. get some feedback from the guys on the launch. But yeah. So what else did we fail to mention for 2024 then? The <laughs> Yamaha. The R9. R9. I mean, it's R9. always it's been rumoured for a little while. Yeah. So, but apparently MCN have said it looks like there is an R9 coming. I yeah. I think 
the Yamaha sort of let it slip because there's obviously the new GSX 8R out. There's yeah. a new Daytona announced. I think they're trying to stop people from going out and Buying. rushing, putting deposits on those and say, well, hold on, guys. We've got, we, we've got, we've got something in the pipeline yeah. for twenty for later and 24. You know the, the one that we talked about on our earlier video, New Bikes for 2024, there was the old rd looking yes the gp uh, yeah the gp version the, the gp yeah. version which is clearly the same engine yeah is that a stepping stone towards bringing out an r9 then do you think or uh, it's I, the same yeah, bike -ish, or will it be if, will it be different to that that's a really good question we don't know. don't we don't know no we, we don't know whether it's going to be is that an mto9 though just yeah, fair it's going to be the same engine I know that. it's possible it could have a different chassis yeah so, but but the gp bike is a mto9 no that, that, that's an xsr it's 900 an XSR, <laughs> it's an xsr which has which has a lot the mto9's got a shorter swinging arm so right. the xsr's got a longer swinging arm but same same frame okay, right. so it's yeah, an xsr yeah. 900 is the gp bike yes in reality with fairing yeah. to make made to look retro exactly the but new r9 we don't know might have a new chassis could be completely different could yeah. be really sporty yeah with that triple engine yeah but yeah. maybe the engines had some work as well. I mean, who knows? We're, but one we're... of the things that you have done, correct me if I'm wrong, so far in 2024 is had the MTO9 SP. End of last year. Was yeah, end yeah, of last 20, year. end of last Which year. Which you thought yeah. was amazing. Brilliant. Which I didn't get to ride. No. So in your view, an R9 well, could be very good? I think it'd be brilliant because that engine is so... It's a bit like, a bit like, well, like the Tracer. It's yeah. such a talky engine. I mean, it's not that refined. It's quite a raw sort of right. experience. But that could work quite well in, in that yeah. sort of sport. Whether it'll be a bike... But well, the M207's got real clip-ons, isn't it? So whether the R9 will be the same or if it'll be a bit more comfortable. When you say the M207, you mean the R7? I mean the R7. I do mean the R7, yeah. yeah. So that's got... So many letters. Yeah. So many, so, so many but, letters, so many bikes. Got you. Yeah. So... And any view on timescales for the official announcement? I think it's no. due to be announced this year. So oh, it could be towards anytime. the end of the year. Anytime. But I think they've sort of let slip some information because of the new... These, yeah. these other middleweight bikes which are being announced. Just so Very people good. just hold on maybe and... and keep their wallets in their pockets for a little yeah. bit longer. So moving on, I put a couple of posts up on social media this morning asking for some questions, burning questions Good that idea. people may have for us. <laughs> so what we do is go through, we haven't even sort of vetted these, so this is sort of a bit... It's true, uh, it's true. So we will, if they're rubbish, we won't obviously go through them, but... So of course, I'll, I'll, none will be rubbish. No, no, How of can you course, say that? Not, uh, subscribers. Not, not my subscribers, it's... but they wouldn't post rubbish. No, you're absolutely right. So I'm going to go through the comments on Facebook. Okay. You're going to go through the comments on Instagram, and we'll, we'll do back and forth, one each sort of thing. Questions. Questions from... Not comments. Or maybe loyal, comments. Maybe comments, yeah, maybe comments. Maybe comments. So uh, you're going first tonight. Yeah? I'll, I'll go with the first one. A question from David Scaff, who says uh, that with the way the UK is going with the roads and the cameras and the potholes, is there any point in having a thousand cc superbike on the road? Go on, let you go first on this one. That's a good question. Um, I'm getting to the point where I'm not even sure having a normal car is an idea <laughs> on the road. To be honest, you always need a four by four. Four by four. So it's a good question. It is getting bad. Yeah, it, it is, is getting bad. Yeah. And actually, arguably, getting a bit dangerous. It, yeah. And it, and it does bother me. I think we all spend quite a lot on road tax. I seem to be taxing vehicles pretty much every month because yeah. we've got so many bloody yeah. cars and yeah. bikes. But you just wonder where the, where the money goes. Well, there are t I've heard rumours that they don't actually fix the roads. They keep the money for claims when people break their cars to pay people off. Yeah, maybe. That's uh, which is ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's ridiculous. It's a bit of a trap, isn't it? Yeah. And I've, you know, having, I drove down skiing in france at the new year and every time i go to europe i do think the european roads are better than uh, uk absolutely. roads aren't they yeah you know and yeah. so we we seem to use quite cheap tarmac yeah, don't they and, yeah. you know in europe they're not saying it's faultless everywhere but yeah. it's, it's definitely a lot well what better. people say is oh well, if you go to spain it's beautiful but they don't get the frost they don't it doesn't get into the cracks doesn't it, but no. well, what about switzerland and you know yeah. in the alps and stuff you know they've yeah. got beautiful and, uh, roads and they certainly get the frost yeah. you know so exactly. you can't Northern use that france, as an excuse it's not yeah. that different to here, yeah, is it? no, so, yeah. exactly. so it's a good question i think the answer is is getting is getting bad and, and maybe a gs adventure or some sort of adventure bike or off-road enduro yeah. bike is the way to go it's getting bad and it's only going to get worse i think yeah. as well certainly with the cameras the average speed cameras exactly. There's all this 20 mile hour speed limits through exactly. through towns, all of that. So yeah, yeah exactly. it's a good point and probably not, not that we speed anyway. So if it was a policeman asking that particular question. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course, we abide by not. the laws anyway. Of course not. Go on, mate. So one Instagram. for me then. So um, is, this one is which one of you, as in us, is going to buy an R1300 GS first? <laughs> and this is from Glenn W Turnbull. Well, I so, think as you've already bought a 1250 in the past, it's got to be here, isn't no, it? Because you've got you've got four. You've got four. 
But you've no. got a form, though, haven't you? I don't, I don't think I'd buy one. I really did like it, um, and I thought it was good, and I did think it was better than a 1250 ultimately at the end of the day, but I don't think I'd buy one because if I bought something like that, I'd probably want it to have a bit more fairing for touring potential. Yeah. What and about the GSA though? We don't know what that's going to look like yet. The GSA, yeah. the GSA maybe, because yeah. it comes with a bit more protection, doesn't yeah. it? But I did think it was very good, but I don't think I'd buy one. You're not personally. ready. And also, um, for me, they're a little bit too expensive as well now. Yeah, yeah. they are. It is pricey, especially with the, by the time yeah. you kit it up and the bits you actually want. Yeah, exactly. And you would, you know, pricey. and I know with BMWs, if you don't buy one with a lot of the uh, the toys, then the resale's pretty yeah, poor, yeah, isn't it? So you almost kind of have to do that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it, I'd buy one. No. Would you? Uh, f n certainly not at the moment. No. Maybe 10 years' time, possibly. Yeah. But, yeah, there's not going to be one appearing in the stable anytime soon. No, and you were quite excited about it. And yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I did think it was fantastic, and I really liked yeah, it. Yeah, it's more sporty. It yeah, bike. it's a very good bike. Yeah. But I just don't do the miles. You know, no. if, I had a, if I had to commute every day to work... Yeah. That would be a different, completely different story. If yeah. I did a lot of touring, it would be a completely different story, yeah. but just don't do it, do we? No, so no. I've got one here on Facebook from yeah. Linda Kemish. Okay. And it's really just for you, this question. Do you know her? I don't know her. I don't no. know Linda. Hi, Linda. She seems Hi. like a Hello. very nice lady. Yeah. I think you might have met her, though, oh. <laughs> based on the question. Uh, it says, how, how do you deal with middle-aged women coming up to you in Tesco's and blabbering complete and utter shite? Got a bit starstruck. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> I know, I know who it is. Hi, Linda. Thanks again. So, yeah, so I was, I was just paying for some stuff in Tesco's, I think it was last weekend, actually. It happens and, all the time, yeah, really. He doesn't know, know who you are. It yeah, happens exactly. all the time. And this lady just looked at me, clearly it was Linda, and uh, she said, you're not, are you? And I went, not what? Depends what you're asking me. And, uh, yeah, basically she was, uh, and we had a bit of a long chat. She was a very, really nice lady, so lovely to meet you. And there you go, yes. It was quite funny. It was quite funny. Right, moving on, because I'm feeling embarrassed Move now. Moving on briefly. I am feeling embarrassed. But it's, it's happening a little bit now, isn't it? When yeah, you kind yeah, of go yeah, out and about, it's quite yeah. funny. But I've got a good question here from somebody called Michael J. Budd. So, hello, Michael. Oh, uh, Michael, I know Michael. Do you know Michael? Big up the Island Massive. Yeah, he's one of the, my friends in sort of Ireland or oh, okay. family of Vicky. And yeah, yeah so he's a, he's a blacksmith. He makes oh, a lot of really good brilliant. artwork and stuff. Well, it's a good yeah. question. Why? Well, I don't know whether the question's actually true and the viewers will have a view, but why are Harley riders so sensitive? <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know many Harley riders. So are they well, in, We're not sort of within our circles, yeah. are they? I, I, I would assume that they're sensitive because they mu they're probably quite sweaty because most of them have got leather chaps on <laughs> and they must be pretty uncomfortable. Uh, they're probably sensitive because they're somewhat deaf from the noise from their stage one pipes, <laughs> yeah? And they're probably sensitive because most other bikers overtake them because they're so, so slow. slow. Yeah. <laughs> slow. I guess, I don't know. But other, no, could, I don't know. You could be onto something there. Yeah, you exactly. could be onto something there. But maybe, on the comments, are Harley riders sensitive? Do you Sounds know any like sensitive it. Harley yeah, riders? I don't think I know any, actually. Yeah. I don't know anyone who's got a Harley, I don't no. think. I mean, you've got the you've got the wild hog sort of sorts, haven't you? Yeah, the who, Harley owners who, group, isn't it? The Harley owners group. But the people who sort of buy them as in middle age, sort of getting old and think, I'm going to buy a motorbike, and let's buy a Harley, yeah. you know. You've got yeah. that sort of Harley rider, and then you've got, obviously, the, the full-on... Um, what's they called? The... Uh, the devils, what they call the uh, proper yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Don't mess yeah. with them yeah, bastards. Yeah. What, in the UK, though? Yeah, we got caught up in really? one of their rides once, and it yeah. was quite terrifying. Really? What are they called? The, uh... Yeah, but I don't know who, what they call. No, no, cause something devils, isn't it? The... Uh... I don't know. Whatever. But anyway, anyway, we got caught up in one of their rides out with Andy and Womble, really? and, they, and we ended up sort of within their group, and they were going really fast for Harley riders. Yeah. And they pulled up to the traffic lights and said, do you want to come into the pub with us? And we really? were like, hmm... I'm not sure. I, I don't fancy getting Roger senseless <laughs> by men wearing chaps. You can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. Like these videos. This is from Simon Robinson. Like these videos, co comparisons between the new Suzuki GX and the Yamaha Tracer GT Plus. Well, that's one we're, we're going to be doing. I'm just, yeah. we, I've had the Tracer. It's actually gone back now. But I'm going to borrow it again when we get hold of the GX and we're going to do a GX versus yeah. Tracer. So I think those two... You know, our sort of direct competitors, yeah. really, that new GX. So, um, aside from the comparison review that we'll do shortly, yeah. you've obviously ridden both and you went to the I have, Yeah, I have ridden just, both. Just in your, your sense now? Yeah. Would you, if, you, if, you, if you had to call it, would you, would you be able to call but, it? Uh, it's, it's really difficult. The trace is a bit more raw. 
Right. Um, Which on, is the it's a bit vibey, yeah, because of that engine. Yeah. It, it, on the motorway, it's a bit vibey and a bit buzzy. Yeah. I actually went down to Corfe Castle the other week and did it. There's a video to come yeah. if it's not up already. Um, of like a long trip on the tracer, well, and, the, and the Suzuki's a little smoother. Then. It's a little smoother. The suspension gives you, it's more, it's, it's it's plusher. It's definitely more comfortable on yeah. on the Suzuki. It's more adjustment on the suspension. Okay. So I think it really depends what you want. If you want more of a sports, but forget what your viewers tourer. want. So your views of Suzuki wins it then for your purposes for what it is. I don't know. You, I, really? I, I need to. Okay. Well, I only tested it in Portugal, so I haven't retested really it in the UK. Okay. So once, once we get it, we'll do that comparison. But I think they're going to be quite close. A lot of people are saying that the Tracer is going to walk it, but the Suzuki does have some advantages there. Okay. So Mate, yeah, we, we will see, and All that right. will be coming. Yep. Okay. So I've got a question here from Superbike Steve. Hello, Superbike Steve. Ultimate three bike garage, but nothing we currently own. So, what would be our ultimate Ooh. three bike garage? That is a really tough one. That's, a, that's really tough because so, the bikes we like. Do you want to go first? Well, yeah, I think so. Because, first of all, probably the new Hypermotard Mono. Because yep. you've got to have a Supermotor in a garage, haven't you? And, yep. that, and we've obviously got this SMCR at the moment. Super Duke, yep. which I don't currently own. Yep. But I'm really sort of trying to resist purchasing one yeah, yeah. <laughs> after doing the launch. Uh, third bike. Ooh, so you've got the Supermoto, you've got the... Super Duke. Yeah, that the third bike's a tricky one, isn't it? Do you want a sports bike? Do you want an adventure bike? You've got to decide. I think maybe the uh, S1000RR is the ultimate sort of Would comfortable you? sports yeah. sports bike on the road. No, good. Yeah, no, I think that's what I'd have, yeah. But well, you. for me, I would have, same thing really, sort of broad range. I would have, funnily enough a Ducati Hypermotard Mono, having not ridden it, but I think it's going to be good, I think probably. it's going to be pretty good, yeah. I would have a Honda Goldwing. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah so I, I could like, have three like, bikes yeah, in my garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah, have a Honda Goldwing. I'm, Gold I'm I, feeling, yeah, I would yeah. Have, we would have absolutely ridiculed yeah. that if we hadn't done know, that test last exactly. year. Exactly, but honestly, brilliant bike. I really, really, yeah, brilliant really bike. enjoyed it and yeah. really enjoy it. And I think just to have something different that you can yeah. actually use in a utilitarian way, yeah. carry stuff. It's, They're so comfortable. I felt cool on it. I just really like them. It's the ultimate touring bike, really. Ultimate touring. Yeah. I think it's the ultimate touring bike. It's yeah. just incredible. Yeah. And then my third bike would be, I think, the BMW M1000R. Oh, I yeah. forgot about that. Because I, it blew me away. Mm. Like, it was so, so good. I think for a road bike, you know, go back to the potholes and the sports bikes on roads, you know, yeah. it was just, it was so good. I, yeah. I really, and I love the look of it. I think it's different. I think it's quite quirky in a good way, but it just to ride, yeah. it was, it was close to perfection. I think the only thing about it that I could, that I could criticise was the fact that the clutch was a bit juddery from a standstill. That's it. But other than that, I mean, everything else was just perfection. The brakes, the handling, the performance, it was just cool. I'm changing mine. <laughs> <laughs> not for that, not for oh, really? that. I'm going to go for the XR, the MXR. Oh, that would be brilliant. Yeah. yeah but so you can, you can have your Goldwing, no. I'll be on the XR. No, I'm going to go yeah. for a okay. little tour. Yeah, there, you go. there you go. Right, over to you. Okay, so this is one from Graham Simpson, which is quite interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts on new bikes versus old bikes. Because riding all the new stuff and then owning some older stuff, Graham's saying he's not sold on all of the new stuff. He prefers some of the older stuff. What's our sort of opinions on all these new bikes, electronics? Is it all a bit unnecessary? Yeah, some of it's getting a bit unnecessary. They're, they're getting a bit complicated, I think. And, you know, they're, they're thinking of everything, aren't they? Yeah. And, you know, and some of it's good. Um, but I think some of the older bikes are also yeah. they're very nice, and I'd like some of the classics as well. I so, think a mix is nice. Isn't a mix is nice, yeah, and, and I don't want to nice. become one of those people that only says, "Oh, you know, everything new is rubbish." And you know, no. not not no, not, no, not, it's not, not. not that anyone's saying that because yeah. it, it's not. But but I think sometimes the simplicity of the older stuff gets overlooked. It's, a, and it's that's, appealing, isn't it? It's, it's quite appealing. That was the joy of it, you know, tuning your own two strokes. It's definitely and, an age thing in that as well. Though, I think so. It? As you get a bit older, you sort of reminisce about the bikes you used to have. Oh, I didn't have yeah. all of that nonsense. This, this was my traction control yeah, back exactly. then and, and all of that. Back. Exactly. But I like the Which old I get, classics, I do yeah. get. Exactly. I'd like, a you know, an RS250 Aprilia two-stroke or something like that. You know, not to ride often, but, yeah. you know. RG500 love... or an RD5. Oh, yeah, it, it, oh, maybe we should revise no, our three-bike no, garage yeah, again. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but you know, so there, yeah, I agree. But um, all right, so me now? Yeah, go on. So I've got one here from Graham Hudson asking, uh, interested to see how I got on with Alex, my son, with his racing last oh. season and plans for this season. So just very quickly on that. So yeah, fairly well, mid pack, most, well, in fact, started off very low down in the pecking order uh, with no limits racing and then ended up sort of progressing a little bit. Had a few incidents, a few spills throughout the yeah, season, yeah. so a few little injuries, which I think is inevitable. Um, we did the last um, 
race meeting with Demsies, which may mean nothing to some of you, but it may mean something to, to some of you. And that was at Brands, and that went quite well. That was oh, probably really? quite a successful meeting. When was that one? That was actually in October, so it was very oh, late okay. in the season, yeah. actually, and the weather was amazing. We were really lucky. It was still really warm. Um, so this coming year, we're doing the Bemsies series overall. So yeah. that's the plan. And actually, I've already started work preparing. The bike is now back at my place just today, actually. And oh. I've got a list, as long as my arm, of jobs, jobs to, do. to do. Loads and loads of jobs all the time. So, yeah, and I think the first race meeting is in March at Brands Hatch again, uh, actually, okay. as it happens. But we're going to a test day or test weekend on the 25th, 26th of February, actually, so really early. Oh, okay. So we've got fingers crossed for dry weather. But yeah. if it's a complete washout, we might pull out of that yeah. But because we won't learn much if it's, if it's too wet. So... Yeah, big plans this yeah, year. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be improving a little bit, and um, I'm hoping for no incidents. Because easier life. <laughs> yeah, an easier life, but it's a lot of work. I mean, it is literally. Oh, it's a lot of it's dedication. To I, it, I thought it? it would be chronically, chronically bad in terms of effort, and it's ten times harder than Other I thought that. it would be. And I thought it would be really hard. It's that. It's unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable. They're just the things you have to think about all the time. Yeah. Just everything. I'm thinking. I actually spend my whole life daydreaming about all the things I must do and think about. It's, it's and incredible. you're not even getting the fun bit of actually doing the riding, are you? No, exactly. <laughs> no, I haven't got the energy to race it as well. But anyway, so there you go. So thanks for asking. If, we'll if you're see. interested in Alex and Greg's racing, we could do a little bit of a series. Okay. You could take a camera along yeah. and it could be I like could. A, an occasional thing, you know, with a bit of a racing update. Yeah. So if that's Put something some interesting, because I don't want yeah, to bore yeah. you all to death and it's obviously not my channel, but I'd be happy to take the camera yeah. along and a bit of insight into racing. And not just the racing itself, but some of the insights into what you have to kind of do and, you know, the it's prep, quite... The prep work and all prep of that, yeah. yeah. It's quite, yeah. you know, quite intense and yeah. quite interesting. And there's a good few laughs as well. Yeah. It's not all bad. It's, it's, it's quite good. So, and we've got actually the big change this year is we've just bought a camper. So, oh, we've bought it. Yeah, you, were, you were looking at one when I yeah, heard. got a camper. It's in the driveway at home. And what I'm big is it like the beat the Fockers, the big old thing with the electric oh, things yeah, that come out of really, really big, you know. It's, t- it's tiny, but it's better than a tent. Yeah. Yeah, it's better than a tent. I don't so think it's better than a tent, is yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it, it's quite hard because obviously we've got to tow quite a lot of weight. So uh, finding something that was good for towing and suitable was not easy, but we yeah, did. So we found it. Yeah. All right, so one more here from me. So this is from Pedro057. So hello, Pedro. And it was basically asking tips for someone wanting to do their first biking trip abroad would be good. So to be honest with you, I've only been to France on a bike once, so I'm probably not the best yeah. person to answer that question. But a lot of people that I do know have been over to northern Spain on a ferry from the UK and then ridden around yeah. various locations. And I've not met anybody that hasn't said it's an absolutely fantastic experience. I'd love to do it. I'll keep meaning to do it. And for some reason, it always goes wrong and I never do it. So that would be my tip, but I've never done it. So it's a bit <laughs> third hand. Yeah. What about you? No, it's the same thing. I think Spain is, yeah. is, is the place to go, I think. Good roads, good weather. Yeah, good roads. And it's good relatively weather. inexpensive in Spain, isn't it? Yeah, like, it is. You know, yeah, so, accommodation's pretty cheap. Yeah. You know, um, So we, we did, me and Wobble did our trip on the Super Duke and his Torono probably five years ago now. Yeah. We've got a whole video series on that. So, so it was good there. Yeah, it brilliant. was incredible but you rode back didn't you we got the ferry down and then rode back and it's too far to ride though isn't it or it's just well, painful, it was just, we, did, we tried to do it in too quick a time yeah. we needed another couple of days you could have spread yeah. it out it, we, we, but we sort of rushed so that's the other tip don't rush don't rush yeah you take your time don't plenty rush. of time and if you haven't got plenty of time then get the ferry down yeah. so that the riding's all enjoyable not just laborious yeah. motorways hour it's, after hour and, and it just gets painful doesn't and it and i think yeah. another trick is because we pre-booked all the all the places so you've got to get to where you've pre-booked well, it's too much of a rush you better off using like booking.com and just thinking where's a new hotel nearby and, and just do it that way so, rather yeah, than so, try so, and pre-plan so everything. So basically just blag it a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, blag it a little yeah. bit, a bit looser. But you plan, keep yeah. your plans a bit looser. I yeah. think works quite well. Yeah. Yeah. The only other top tip that I would give actually, final tip is don't wear a massively heavy backpack. Yeah. That is a killer. Yeah, isn't yeah it? it is a killer. It's yeah. a killer. Yeah. You need to have mostly luggage strapped to the bike yeah. and if you're going to wear a backpack, have very minimal well, well Womble's back was knackered for yeah. 12 months after we got back from that Spain trip. Yeah. Really, really sciatica in his legs. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely awful cause from that backpack. Yeah, yeah. So, so keep it yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, personally. There's some good yeah. tips there for people who haven't actually done much story. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. Right, one more. One, one more. One more okay, question. I'll put my phone one down more then. question. Um, I've got to find it later. I'm like at finding these questions. Okay, so there's a good question from Chris McAvoy, who's Long-term subscriber. Hello, Chris. How are you? Thoughts on the CF Moto links with KTM and their take on the 790. The CF Moto 800 NK, he thinks he actually looks a bit better than the KTM version. You know, the different bikes, the dealers. Will we see a CF Moto 990 version one at one point in a comparison video? 
So yeah, it's it's, it's a good it's a good question with the CF Moto stuff, and we we did a comparison with the the seven ninety Duke, didn't we? I've also yeah. ridden the seven ninety Adventure, and you wouldn't you know a lot of people a lot of stigma yeah. about bikes made in China, but I think CF Moto is a proper serious outfit. You know, it's, yeah. it's not like some of the one two five manufacturers where you've got to take the exhaust off to drain the oil out because the train bolts right under the exhaust. Yeah. You know, it's it's completely different to that. I know there's a lot of political reasons why people don't yeah. want to buy Chinese bikes as well. But I think from a re- reliability point of view, I wouldn't be worried about the no. CF Moto stuff. Uh, you know, I think it could even be better than the Austrian built stuff. Yeah. To, to some and other CF Moto dealers coming to you? Yeah, they've got, yeah. I think I was speaking to on the KTM launch, I think they've got, I've got a lot more dealers now. A lot, yeah. I think I can't remember the figure, but okay. the, the, the dealers are really starting to to pick them up now. Yeah, yeah. and the, the bikes are going to be really, really good. The, the yeah. only thing, speaking to KTM, they said some of the mapping isn't quite as good on the CF Moto right. compared to the KTM stuff. But yeah, the actual bikes themselves. But the 790 was That's absolutely quite weird, fine. Though, isn't it? You'd yeah, assume, you'd assume that they'd just share maps, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I think there's enough differences where they actually map them they themselves on some on some of the models. On some of the models, right. I don't know if it's all the models, but um, yeah, I, I I would buy a CF motor yeah. bike. I, I, I think yeah. I, I I definitely would. Yeah. Well, the 790 Adventure you liked a lot, didn't you? That's and, really and the good. Duke, yeah. We both liked it. Yeah. It was good. So it was like, interesting. I had a I was last year went to Silverstone with Ducati. And chatting to like, there had some senior people over from Italy on the Ducati yeah. front, and they were like, KTM are giving their R and D away to the Chinese. You know, they, they yeah. couldn't understand what why they had that sort of connection with, and they they saw they were right. just like giving away their secrets, if you like. And obviously, moving the Chinese on yeah, yeah. in development, you know, a couple of years, bringing them forward. I mean, yeah. and that is a thing. And they said they're going to be competing directly with them soon, and yeah. they're going to be, you know, potentially taking sales from from yeah. from KTM. So Ducati couldn't understand it, but they said they weren't too worried. We're sat at the top. <laughs> they're, not, they're never going to be as good as us. <laughs> was, yeah, their, their was their sort of attitude. But they, they were like, why are they doing it? They, they yeah. couldn't understand it. But speaking to KTM, they literally don't have any more capacity to manufacture bikes at their plant in Austria. Right. So they either build a whole other facility or, or, do they, what they're doing. or they do what they do and they outsource a bit to, yeah. to, to CF Moto. And I think Baja do some of the 390s in India as well, I think. Right. But everything else from KTM, apart from the 790s, and the I think I think the three ninety range is is made in Austria. Yeah. But yeah, there we go. Good. All right. Well, good questions, and they're quite a few, weren't they? So sorry. They we were. Sorry yeah. we didn't get no, to no. all of them, but they were good. So what we've got to do now? This is the big so drum roll. The big the big drum roll on our Prize draw. best bike to twenty twenty four. I mean, these goodies. We've got it's unbelievable. We've, Go on, you've got to, you've got a we've got a helmet wipes. So we have some heated grips, which I haven't tested, but these are very, very good. And a oh, balaclava. Balacla- balaclava. <laughs> it is a balaclava, isn't it? <laughs> it is a balaclava, yeah. <laughs> but the, these grips are the is the is the prize item. That's the best thing. Oh, and the, the, these yeah. detect when your battery, they've got their own switch on the actually. You haven't got a massive module to activate no. it. They look they look the absolute business days. And what we said was the, the funniest comment. Uh, in the 2024. Almost deserving. The most deserving, almost yeah. deserving, yeah. yeah. But sort of a bit of humour in it. Um, but we haven't decided, so we're just going to look at those comments now and read a few of the good ones out and then we decide who is going to win this, uh, this little giveaway. There was one Best that said going on that YouTube. there was one that made me laugh. I think I know which one's going to win because one, one really made me laugh. So we is that the one we... that says you've got a face like a mother, only a mother could love? Did you see that <laughs> I can't, one? I can't did, remember did that. Did you see that one? <laughs> you got to read a few. You read a few out. So we, John Hart... 868. I am I am 60. My hands go numb. Please help me get... I get so cold to stop for the toilet. I can't feel it. And then I peel over myself. Please, please have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That sounds like hitting grips are needed there. Or maybe just the balaclava and then no one know who you are. Well, we've got quite a little bit of, bit of, a, bit of a poem from Richard Wood here. In winter chill, with grips aglow, balaclava snug, face in tow. Visor wipe stance, a frost, frosty ballet, riding through the cold in awe of Lamb Chop's giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty, That's good. pretty good, Richard. That pretty I good. like that. Oh, contenders. Go so on. this is uh, Ben Rideout, 9583. But the comment is, I deserve the giveaway because my surname is Rideout. It really is in brackets. I own an MT10 SP and bought home a mini moto cross bike in the boot of my cash guy for my three-year-old son without telling my wife. 
Her anger is simply a consequence my son and I are prepared to endure for the hunt of skids and wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be in the league. Oh, He's got to be in the top three. got to be up there, isn't it? Peter Searle is moaning that I'm a tight ass because I won't post them to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't know where these people are based, actually. Some of the winner could end up in Australia. <laughs> You've got to be careful. Got to be careful. Cost of living crisis. So I've got one here that I think should be a contender. This is from at 2301 Drew. And apparently he says, he or she says, I have a face only a mother could love and I'm constantly scaring drivers when they look in their rear view mirror. The balaclava will protect other road users over the winter months. <laughs> the heated grips will keep my lobster claws for hands warm and won't look out of place on my K7 GSXR. The visor wipe shall be placed with all other visor cleaning products under my seat, never to be used again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, just rubbing it in here, we, we've got Andrew, 92. He says, I deserve the heated grits because the temperatures regularly do drop below 20 degrees here in Australia. That is bloody cold. <laughs> <laughs> no chance, no, Andrew. No chance. no chance. Maybe we need to go for the sympathy one here, though. So Gareth Petley, 6715. Love the video. Fantastic. Please give me the heated grips because I've always wanted a set. I'm recently separated from my wife and trying to ride my Firestorm more to keep the old head clear. And although we've never met, I'm in the next village or two over and you won't have to pay for postage. Oh, so that that's appeals always to you. Appeals that, to that appeals to you, Cost Chocolate. of living crisis. And the poor chap split up from his wife. So I oh, know, oh, have, he, he, have a heart. He's right out there. Top, top three, top three. Have you done this one? John Hart. I am 60. My hands go numb. Please help. They get so cold when I start for the toilet. I can't feel it and pee all over myself. Please have a heart. <laughs> I'm going to go for the poet. We've both read that one out. It was good. That's been a good one. What, was, what was his name though? We've got to find it again now. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what his name was. Come on, you've got to find the Come poet. Come on, let's find him. You can declare the winner, but it's Richard Wood, 5403. Richard. The poet. You've won. Your, your, your poet warmed our cockles. It warmed was. our cockles. It was so very, we, very good. Very we, witty. And you, yeah, well done. We return the favour. We'll warm your hands instead <laughs> and your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do, I'll send you a message uh, to, your, you, to your YouTube account. Hopefully you've got your email in your about. If you haven't, send me an email. If you go on my uh, jbmugan at hotmail.co.uk. But we need to confirm it's Richard. So I'll contact you through your YouTube channel. You hopefully you've got a contact in there. Congratulations. And hopefully he's in the UK. But yes. otherwise, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet yeah, and send exactly. them out, aren't I? Because uh, you made the effort, Richard. So uh, well done. Congratulations. Well grips. done. Well done. Great poem. We'll be winging their way to you very, very soon. So I have a question then. Uh, no more giveaways tonight then? No, nothing new? No, for, no well, no no, no. no, no. Unfortunately not. It was times are tough, aren't they? No, you know, tough times. <laughs> tough, tough, tough times. Tough times. Tough times. Uh, I do have some goodies in this box, though. Oh. Not, not to give away, but just as a little... Uh, it's pop, pop the Hyper Motar project. Oh. So it's, it's, some, it's some carbon fibre bits and pieces for the Hyper. So we've got, look, I mean, that I've got some lovely... Is that a side panel? That's a side panel. That's a side panel. Oh, that's and then, nice, isn't it? Yeah, so I've got full carbon bodywork to You're go... You're going to leave it exposed carbon now? Is that the plan? Well, I'm going to... Maybe paint something over the top and like leave some bit some like a super leggera yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. painted, maybe like a dark, yeah. sort of Nardo grey sort of Audi, but then yeah. leaving some of the carbon and stuff. So the hyper project is still. Yeah, nice, I've that? got the, the beak, engine. That's yeah, the that's the beak. So I've got the engine. I've still not started putting it back together. You can see all the bits behind me. They're just they're ready to go. So I need to pull no, my finger nice. out and uh, yeah, get, get that done. Get that done so for the spring. So who are you going to paint it, Barry? Probably our mate Barry. Our yeah. mate Barry. Our mate Barry. Yeah. Bye, Barry. Hi right, Barry, hope you're watching mate. A little project for you here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor oh, Barry. Nice. Poor Barry. So there we go, mate. I think that is more or less it. I mean my, oh, my glass is dry. Your yeah, can's probably drink. empty have as well. Drink. A few more drinks. We've got a nice bit of grub to eat, nice bit of Mexican to stick. We have. Get so, our so what's, into. Uh, what's next then? What's coming next? So yeah, what's coming up? We've got the rest of the Super Duke or the KTM launch videos. They're probably already out by the time this has gone out, maybe. We've got the second part of my Tenere ride down to Corfe Castle, which yep. is I think fairly amusing. Yeah. We're gonna do the um I've actually got a, a tracer, not a tracer, a Tenere seven hundred sat yep. over there. Yep. And uh, you know Mossy. Yep. You know, I don't think you've yeah, ever met Mossy. No, have I haven't you? met him, but I know him, yeah, of course. He wants to start his own YouTube channel. Okay. So when I was out on the GX launch last year, we had chatting and I said I'd lend him a hand and sort of get him started. And he said, well, what can I do for you? And I'm like, 
I don't know. <laughs> what, can, what can you do for me? So he's actually got a V-Strom 800 DE on long-term tests on Suzuki. Yep. And he said, why don't we go out and do a bit of an off bit of off-road on the Tenere and him on the Is 800. He well, I, 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 he's much better than me at off-road. Yeah, yeah. But I thought, well, yeah, okay, we'll go out and do a video. Yeah, so me and Mossy are going to be going out. And will that be on your channel initially? Yeah, that'd yeah. be on my channel. Or maybe on, on his when his is launched as well, yeah. But he's, yeah. he's keen to get a channel up and running. I said I'd help him out yeah, with that. Brilliant. So that's, that's going to be coming. Um, we've got the Ducati, uh, I think we just mentioned it before, the Ducati Media Day, which we're going to yep. try and both get onto that. Yep. I've got the new Africa Twin coming, and I think Brilliant. you're going to be doing a first ride Fantastic. on the Africa Twin. Because yeah. we're going to try and get Greg, an official member of the channel, official. so he's going to be doing some more videos on his own. Yep. And then maybe even some of these launches as well. Cause... So if the subscribers go down, obviously it'll be short-lived. <laughs> <I'd> like, he's <laughs> gone now. <laughs> No, it's three months won't. time, yeah. yeah. Do you remember that Gregory? He's gone. <laughs> Don't worry. He's off now. Resubscribe. So there, there's some launches coming up, which I can't do them all. So And you've sort of cut down on your work a bit now as well, yeah. haven't you? You've sort of semi-retired. A bit more time. Lucky man. A bit more time. So, um, yeah, so hopefully Greg might even be doing some of the launch stuff or, or trips or trips abroad and that yeah. sort of stuff. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff. We're really going to concentrate on the comparison. So yeah. any comparisons you really want to see, let yeah. us know. They're good, aren't they? They're yeah, good. the comparisons are good. They're good to do. They're, they're sort of interesting, and it, yeah. it's a bit of banter and that back and forth. No, I think works and really well. And it's so nice to ride two bikes that are direct competitors and just work out. Yeah. And you do it back to back, and you just get to feel the little differences, and it's very nice. When yeah. you go for a test ride, it's kind of hard, isn't it? You it think, oh, really I really is. like this. Then you ride the other bike and think, I really like this. And then you forgot the, you know. Yeah, yeah, but that's so sort of on one on the other. People make a decision on what they want to do. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, there's also and plus stuff on our own bikes and the hyper low tired rebuild. So there's a lot of lot of stuff coming up. A lot of excellent content on the way. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. We will try and do one of these again in another month or so. Yep, or three months. But know <laughs> what we're like. But I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, have a good one. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers.